Hi guys, Wim the watercolor lefty here once again. So in the previous video, which I will link in the description below, we filled up this huge porcelain palette uh, with my tube paints, my watercolor tube paints um, in the um, yeah color wheel arrangement or setting. Um, if you want to know why I um, filled it in this um, particular way. Um, feel free to have a look at the previous video where I explained that in more detail. Right now, um, as promised, we'll be swatching the colors together. Um, as you can see here, I've prepared a miniature version of this uh, palette um, with the 24 colors in the color wheel and then the eight um, corner wells, which I also filled up mostly with earth tones and neutrals. So let's get uh, swatching. I've also noted down, perhaps it's not that easy to see in the video because I wanted to get the palette and this um, paper block in the same screenshot. Um, but I'll um, be mentioning the pigments in case that's something you would be interested in. And I'll also give you some um, reasoning why um, these colors in particular. Um, I noticed there's a bit of a glare of the lamp in the water. Um, there's not a lot I can do about that or I'll be filming in the dark. So I apologize if that would disturb you. Um, let's get going. So on the very top of the color wheel here, I have the Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, PY97. So let's get um, you know what I usually do? I usually spray all of the pigments to get them nice and wet. So let's just do that up front. Give them time to get activated. So hence a yellow medium as my cool yellow. Again, I've mentioned it in the previous uh, video. Um, because you would probably say, hey Wim, this is not really a cool yellow. This is a yeah, in between, an, an in between color, uh, in between a red, uh, sorry, in between a warm and a cool yellow. Well, um, I really don't like the Hansa yellow light um, or the lemon kind of yellows. I never use them. I'm not a big floral painter so that's why I don't really have any use for that and I've noticed that this medium this Hansa yellow medium mixes very well um, with the blues to get great greens great greens um, so I've uh, chosen to get the mediums um, for my cool actually moving to the next one which is my version of a warm yellow and that is the new gamboge which is daniel smith py 110 and py 97 so there's a bit of this hansa yellow medium pigment in here this one new gamboge i absolutely love this one i prefer this one over some kind of yellow deep or cadmium uh, deep whatever there is on the market um, because this one creates stunning uh, very nice bright oranges uh, clear oranges if you would mix this with a warm red which we'll be getting to in a minute um, Naples yellow is next on my list and that is simply because I really like this um, color it is a, um, a bit more opaque um, I use it for um, skin tones cauca Caucasian skin tones um, but also for um, Mediterranean cityscapes like you know the the um, Italian southern French uh, Spanish uh, look of these sandstones so a bit more opaque as I said that is 
mostly because there is a white pigment in here, PW4, uh, together with PY97, so again this Hansa Yellow Medium pigment, and a bit of red in there, PR101, which is a pigment that most of you will uh, know as English red or Venetian red, um, the, the, the likes of that. Next up, we've got Quinacridone Gold. Um, you could be mixing this one um, yourself, actually, with Hansa Yellow Medium and uh, Burn Sienna, which is a bit down, further down. Um, but again, this is my studio palette. I don't really need to carry this around with me. So I've chosen some convenience colors, which I would be mixing anyhow. Um, what I really like about this quinacridone uh, gold, which is Daniel Smith here, PO48 and PY150, is a, it's kind of a, a, a rust um, building type of color, um, earthy yellow. Uh, I actually use this one more than yellow ochre. Um, for, for buildings, um, even though it is a, a warm yellow, you can see, let me get that a bit clearer, that it really cools down to a very nice yellow once it's diluted. So if you put more mass tone on here, you would see a very nice gradual cooling down of this color, which I like. Next up, um, my Secondary, so in between yellow and red, is my orange. I've chosen the Chinese orange by Sennelier. As you can see, Sennelier um, uh, watercolors don't really um, harden. So these were all Daniel Smiths, which um, you might have noticed are they harden pretty fast. If you if you let them sit out for a day or two, the um, the paint gets a bit harder, and then it's um, easily reactivated, of course, with uh, with spraying a bit of water. Um, but uh, Sennelier is honey-based and not gum arabic, which means that um, it never really dries out, it never really hardens. And that is why I have uh, chosen to only have this in my uh, studio palette. I have recently been um, going out and about uh, with um, a smaller um, palette. Um, it was, I don't know if it was this one. No, it was an even smaller one. I don't have it nearby here. It was half this. And there was some uh, Sennelier um, colors in there. And because in my backpack it was um, sitting like that the whole time, um, I noticed that um, it, it, it kind of shifted. It, it, I wouldn't say it dripped out of the pan, but it shifted. Um, and I, I didn't really like that. I wouldn't take this on a 12-hour on a flight um, with me, um, with having the risk of ruining the inside of a backpack or something like that. So um, I've decided to only use the Sennelier paints in my studio palette and never take them outside. Prove me wrong. Um, if your experiences tell you something different, I'm, I'm very glad to find out. Perhaps it's a bit the humidity uh, over here that um, prevents them even further from drying out. Um, I, and, and which actually is a bit of a shame because I did buy this to take along with me on my Japan trip, which is coming up in two weeks, um, because it is a very nice um, orange that is very um, uh, present in all of the shrines and the Tories uh, shrines uh, entrances in the Shinto and uh, Buddhist temples and shrines. Um, but again, I'll be mixing my own orange um, since I'll be taking a smaller uh, box of watercolors anyhow. Next up, um, and you might remember this from my previous video, why did I put the uh, burnt sienna and the burnt umber in my uh, color wheel and not in the corner wells as one of my earth tones. Well, basically because I had some spots left to fill up. <laughs> That's the only reason. And hey, again, it's my color wheel, so I can do what I want, right? Um, 
Burn Sienna. This one doesn't need any explanation, I believe. Let me see if I can just turn this around. Um, Burn Sienna PBR7. A very nice granulating version from Daniel Smith. That is Burnt Sienna and Burnt Sienna again, a classic. Um, mix this with uh, French Ultramarine to get uh, grey and darkish colors, for, yeah, ideal for shadows. Um, so that is Burnt Sienna. Let me put a bit more color on top. See how dark we can get this. All right. And neighboring to that, its friendly cousin, Burnt Umber, same pigment, PBR7. Also Daniel Smith, Burnt Umber, which is, yeah, again, a classic standard light brown color, I would say, when diluted. The paper I am painting on, by the way, is Baohong 100% cotton paper cold press and I have drawn this wheel, the outline of this color wheel, with a micron, uh, just with a standard Pigma micron uh, pen, not a pen, um, uh, um, sharpie or whatever you would, you would call that. All right, um, looking good so far. Moving on into the more red um, colors, which is Pyrrol Scarlet, my um, essential warm red. Um, and I'm not saying that because it's my essential. Uh, Daniel Smith even says it's an, an essential because they've put it in their uh, split primary essentials kit as their warm red. So Pyrrol Scarlet, very vibrant. Um, nice warm red. Which is PR225. A single pigment uh, color. Always nicer for mixing. So that you don't have a lot of contamination of other um, cooler or warmer pigments in there. Um, bright oranges, um, as I said, um, Hansa Yellow Medium, Pyro Scarlet, fantastic oranges. Let's, don't take my word for that, just let's have a look here. A bit more yellow. Look at that. Fantastic, nice, bright orange. All right, my middle of the road red, so in between warm and cool, is Winter Red by Winter and Newton, PR254 which is a, um, I would say, I always call this my fire truck red. I'm sorry if I'm shifting this a bit around a bit. I want to have the mass tone on the outside of the wheel and diluting it inwards. And there's not really another way how to do this. So fire truck red, also um, very nice. Um, you know, when painting um, poppies, but I live in Belgium, so poppies is where uh, Flanders Fields, World War I, um, inspired a lot of poppy uh, themed uh, items. So in bright sunlight, if you would paint them in bright sunlight, you would choose the Pyrrol uh, Scarlet um, because yeah, it's a, a warmer light then. But in um, when, when evening falls, winter red is actually a very nice color to paint these poppies um, in, a, in a kind of a cooler uh, toned down setting. 
Um, next, another classic, um, and I just realized the letters are now upside down, but um, Quinacridone Rose, um, PV19 by Daniel Smith. Uh, again, included in their Essentials kit because of its amazing um, mixing uh, power. So Quinacridone Rose as the cooler red. This one is a must have on the go for mixing nice bright purple. All right, um, very staining, so watch out with that. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate the um, the purple when I get to the um, the French Ultram Green because that is what we'll be using to get the most vibrant purple here. Uh, my all-time favorite uh, cool red, um, which doesn't lean towards the the rose uh, family, um, is carmine. Um, I know rose. Um, what's it called? Madder. Mather Lake um, is uh, a preference by a lot of people as well. I really like this deep, deep, um, yeah, almost blood color of the carmine. Um, just because I like it. <laughs> um, there we go. Permanent magenta. Um, which is my, uh, which is PV19, so the same pigment as Queen Acridum uh, Rose, uh, and also uh, Imperial Purple by Daniel Smith. Um, the Permanent Magenta is by Sennelier, and the Imperial Purple Daniel Smith PV19 as well, but with a bit of um, PB29, so a bit of uh, French Ultramarine in the mix, um, is... Um, my two yeah, convenience purples, convenience violets um, on my palette here. So let's have a look at, again, you can see I really don't need a lot of this um, pigment here. This is reactivated very easily because it's not dried up. the honey-based Sennelier. So, permanent magenta. And then imperial purple. As my secondary, look at that gorgeous purple. Let's try and see in a minute if we can achieve this exact one. With French ultramarine and quinacridone rose. We should be getting pretty close. So there we go with imperial purple. Next up more towards blue tones indigo. Um, a Sennelier one uh, because I uh, compared Sennelier with um, Daniel Smith and I just like the, the value, the, the tone, the hue, I, I should say, of this um, Sennelier one uh, better. It's PB60, PB15, uh, colon 1, and uh, a bit of a black uh, one, PBK7 in the mix. So Indigo, Sennelier, and once again, you will notice, I should be cleaning my water bottle, my water tank out. Let's see how far we get when doing this side now. Um, so where was I? I am here and again not a lot of movement or re-wetting needed. This is easily picked up. A very very uh, intense indigo. I absolutely love Sennelier's version of this color. Let's see if we can get the letters 
to show up more by lifting a little bit. So that's indigo, great blue for um, stormy clouds, ominous clouds, um, ominous, ominous weather altogether, um, seas in stormy weather. Absolutely love this color. Next up, um, one that needs no announcement, French Ultramarine, my pick for a warm blue, a blue that leans towards towards the warmer sides. Um, it's a fundamental one, it's granulating. I think in every brand, um, uh, French Ultramarine is granulating. I've not come across a non-granulating French Ultramarine yet. So if you know of one, let me know in the comments. Um, but luckily for me, I am a huge fan of granulating colors. So there we go, French Ultramarine. Uh, as mentioned before, very versatile. I add a bit of burnt sienna to get a nice gray um, for skies um, and add quinacridone rose, so the cool red to get a ve very vibrant purple violet. Let's see if we can achieve that. So this was my ultramarine, quinacridone rose. Look at that. This is an amazing purple. A bit in between magenta and purple, I would say. So if we would darken it, we should go towards the purple more. Yeah, there we go. Stunning. So again, these ones are on my studio palette. I am not taking these ones when I'm out and about. I just have my ultramarine and my rose um, to get these mixes. Next up, cobalt blue, which I um, uh, consider as my in-between, uh, my in-the-middle kind of mm, blue. Um, so in between warm and cool. Cobalt blue, um, you will notice it's not on the exact spot here. Um, and that is because I wanted to have more um, convenience greens on my color wheel in my studio palette. Um, so cobalt over here, um, a Sennelier one, which um, again reactivates very easily PB28. French Ultramarine, I forgot to mention, was a PB29, but I guess people that know their pigments if that's something you're into, they don't need any explanation on French Ultramarine. So here we go with Cobalt Blue. Cobalt Blue um, is um, yeah, slightly opaque, I would say. Um, and a very bright, bright, so non-warm, non-cool in my book, um, blue. Talking about non-warm, non-cool, we are going into the cool uh, blue. Again, a classic phalo blue green shade, PB15 Daniel Smith, um, which is a uh, very standard cool blue, very staining. So ideal for mixing greens, very vibrant uh, greens with, for example, Hansa Yellow Medium, which we'll be doing in a minute. Um, powerful, you don't need a lot um, of this color. Um, you can see already just adding a tiny bit of water, picking up a tiny bit of pigment goes a long, long way, as you can see. A very intense blue, very nice warm, uh, sorry, cool, blue, PB15, amazing, amazing color. Um, let's see, I'll be 
let's just try the um, Hansa yellow over here with just the tiniest bit of phalo and then I'll just pause the video real quick and get some clean water. Uh, a tiny, tiny bit. Look at that. Go immediately for a very nice vibrant green. I hope this is still in the shot. Let me turn it around again. Look at that green. Absolutely amazing. And the more you add, the more shifts in hue you would get. So a bit of a darker. Let's add some more. Very nice. All right. Um, before, oh no, no, let's um, do two more before moving into a new bucket of water. Because I've seen, I see here Prussian Blue PB27 by Daniel Smith. A very nice, dark, intense blue uh, as well. Um, basically, just because I like this, um, I like this one very much um, for roads, cobblestones, adding a bit of adding a bit of a neutral um, tint or even a bit of uh, burnt sienna, uh, a bit of burnt amber um, to get um, a very nice darker tone of this color uh, for roads, asphalt roads, cobblestones, step stones uh, on houses, how do you say that, threshold, the, the, the thing that a groom usually carries the bride over. Um, for this, I definitely use that. Um, the, uh, the uh, how would I say, rock or stone that is called Ardeun in, um, in Flemish. Blue stone, I believe, is the name in English, um, is also um, uh, used for that. And then uh, next, pardon, last blue on the palette, Cerulean Blue Chromium. Um, which is a granulating one um, for skies. Um, ideal. I, I don't have a lot of other uses than skies. Um, this one, so PB36, Daniel Smith. Uh, and when I say skies, uh, you probably could use this just like this, straight out of the pan without mixing it. When you live in the south of France, um, just see, diluting it a bit, and you have that typical Mediterranean, Southern French um, Van Gogh uh, style of sky. Um, but where I live, um, the sky usually looks a bit more um, uh, grey and grim. <laughs> so um, mixing a bit of the um, French ultramarine in with the cerulean blue um, gives it a perfect sky um, for where I live. And let's just quickly demonstrate that. So the cerulean and a bit of the, um, what did I say, French ultramarine. And you get a toned down version. See? Of a, sorry about that. Let's get more. which is a bit more toned down than the actual cerulean blue for a sky. All right, this being said, real quick, going to pause this video and I'll be back to finish the rest of the colors with some more clean water. And we're back. Water has been changed. And we're going to go into the greens. Now, you could say, hey Wim, why? such a huge amount of greens. You can mix virtually any type of green um, with your yellows and your blues. Um, well, I know, once again, this is the studio palettes um, and I love the variation and the, 
the comfort of some convenience colors. Um, besides, um, I wouldn't really know how to mix, for example, Green Appetite Genuine, which is a mineral um, uh, with, with any of these colors. So just indulge me, right? This is, um, this is for convenience um, purposes. Uh, although I should um, say that when on the road in my tiny, well, tiny palettes, I think there's 16 colors. Um, I do actually have Sap Green, um, Green Appetite Genuine, and Forest Green, if I'm not mistaken. And I'll show you why. Um, these are just really nice. Where did I put the sponge? Over here. Um, really nice uh, colors. Uh, for example, the Forest Green by Sennelier. Again, you don't need a lot of rewetting. Is a very, very nice dark green. Um, which I use as an undertone for shrubs. So you can see it's not really um, opaque, it's very transparent. Even when going over it once again, um, you will see when it dries, it is quite transparent. Uh, and that is ideal, I find this ideal to do as an underpainting for forests or landscapes, uh, sorry, uh, yes, landscapes um, in, the, in the far end um, where everything is a bit darker. Um, an underpainting of this kind of green, it's an LA PBK7, PY42, PG7, for those interested. Diopside green, which is a mineral, it's not a pigment, uh, so there's no pigment information, it is a mineral. Um, Daniel Smith has these in their Primatech range. Uh, the next one is also uh, one like that. Um, Diopside Genuine, I've mentioned in the previous video, and if you haven't watched it, go and do that right after you watch this one. Uh, or pause this one, watch the other one first and return to this one, whatever, you're, whatever you like. Um, but um, you will know that I've considered this to be my um, secondary, so my um, uh, ideal green, where usually if I'm not mistaken, people tend to put Viridian um, in here. I don't really like Viridian. I find it very artificial. I don't really like um, that Viridian that I've seen by a couple of brands already. Might be that it's a Viridian um, hue, that it's actually phalo green. Um, doesn't matter, I really don't like it. I really like this, um, the, the granulation in this um, green, which tends to go towards a Viridian uh, kind of color. Um, but this is, this is really, um, when I paint my um, shrubs um, and trees, um, this, this granulation in here is amazing. Um, very nice and when, when it's really in mass tone, let me see. If I can put more, I was gonna say pigment here. It's not a pigment, whim, it's a mineral. So when I put more mineral um, on top here and that dries, you will see that the granulation starts, uh, the second it starts drying up, it, it's, it disperses a bit, which gives a lot of um, effect in your landscapes, shrubs, trees already, just by doing, just by letting this dry. And the Next one is, is actually a bit of the same, but um, a different uh, color spectrum. It is green, um, green appetite genuine, also a mineral, as I mentioned before. Look at that, how dark intense when in mass tone and then just diluting it. Look at that. Look at how these particles just flow on the page. Um, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I was gonna do this. Um, so you can see it, it's just, it granulates the moment you disperse it. Um, this is an amazing um, color. Um, the, the yellow speckles that come free in, in a separation. It tends to go a bit in the, in the values of sap green, but with a very nice effect already in, in the paint. Um, without having to do anything else to the paint. And then 
as mentioned, sap green, um, a mixture of three um, pigments. Oops, I didn't want to put that again in the appetite one. I needed to be here. So um, a mixture of three pigments and I've not seen a lot of sap green brands, brands with sap green that use three pigments. And that is why I prefer this Daniel Smith one. I have the Sennelier and I have the, I believe I have the um, Van Gogh, which is a student grade, uh, admittedly. Um, but this already has a very nice um, tone to it. I know that a lot of people don't like to use sap green straight out of the tube or pan. Uh, they always want to mix it with something else. To be honest, I would use this um, for spring spring leaves. Um, very nice springtime colors, very juicy um, uh, saplings, um, a, a really nice color. And then the last one on the color wheel here is olive green. Again, a mixture of three um, but this time by Sennelier, um, which I really like when diluted. So this is an amazing, very bright. When I see this, I immediately think indeed of olives that you get on a terrace in southern Italy or southern Spain, southern Greece. <laughs> um, that is really this color amazing um very nicely um separation very nice separation as well of the uh, py 150 so the um the yellow which is in here which is also um in here in the quinacridone gold um, and it also gives a very nice dispersion uh, when you can see that it's, it leaves little speckles and it does this yellow does the same inside this uh, olive green by uh, Sennelier. So that is a nice uh, characteristic of this uh, yellow. I, I have no idea what yellow, what PY150 is as a pigment. I should look it up. If anybody knows, just leave me a comment. Um, but I like this, um, this effect. All right, um, I think that's it for the color wheel. Look at that, amazing color wheel. Uh, even if I say so myself, you'll probably hear me switch over some papers here because I can't remember everything that I'm saying. Um, so I just flipped the ra flipped um, the page around, and let's get started with a fresh batch of water and a um, the corner wells, um, which are my um, earth tones and grays neutrals. Uh, starting with uh, buff titanium PW six colon one. Daniel Smith, which is over here, and that needs a bit of waking up. So, buff titanium, awesome uh, color, awesome earth, um, well, not an, an earth, uh, like more of a stone sand uh, color, uh, very opaque. Um, and used as well for um, mixing uh, when you want to have a pastel, pastel like softer, softer versions of your intense colors, um, pastel colors. I usually use this for sand and um, uh, buildings. Um, um, I mix it a lot with my um, quinacridone uh, gold to get this. Um, very nice buildings colors, which usually people get. Now I'm going to say something which might be an unpopular opinion, which usually people get from this yellow ochre. Um, but yellow ochre by Daniel Smith is really, really too weak for my opinion. It really is very weak. So I use this kind of color a lot for um, underpainting um, buildings. So I always start with the very light layers and that is what it's ideal for, this Daniel Smith version. It is a very weak, um, yeah, almost just put some light color on the page kind of ochre. Um, and I prefer 
Micronacridone Gold for the finer details. So, um, yeah, this is just my, popular, my unpopular opinion, but it is my personal opinion. It might have something to do with that. Um, a lot of brands use PY42 and uh, Daniel Smith uses PY43. That might be the reason, I don't know. Um, why I found this very, very weak. You need a lot of pigment to get something on the page. Um, so yeah, again, my personal opinion. Next one is um, one that probably not a lot of people have in their palettes. I just simply adore it. I think it's my favorite color on the whole palette. It's Caput Mortem. Um, I don't know if that shows up, um, but it, it will when I put it on the page. Caput Mortem is the color of dried up blood, if I can put it quite um, plastically. <laughs> um, so it is um, pigment 101, PR 101, um, which usually people refer to as Phoenician red, English red, um, kind of like that. but. The way that uh, this Sennelier um, is bind, is bound, binded, bound, um, with the honey. I, I mentioned before, Sennelier uses honey as a binder. Um, it just, it, it gives such a deep, intense brick color. As I mentioned, dried up blood. Caput Mortem is, is dead head, if I'm not mistaken, in, in Latin. I, um, I've read that somewhere. Uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but um, yeah, this, when it's dried up, you will see if you've ever seen, hopefully not, but if you've ever seen dried up blood, um, this is the exact color. Uh, and I use that uh, for bricks, for brick masonry um, stuff. My, um, my absolute favorite English red version. Um, next up, sepia. Um, no explanations needed here. Uh, either, I guess. Again, I didn't spray this well. Pretty good, I think. Let me put some water. So, sepia. Um, PBK9, PR7, PBR7, which is PBR7, which we remember from Sienna and Umber. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't really mind if there's a bit of transfer. That's the beauty of watercolors, right? So, um, sepia, as I was saying, uh, more neutral brown and a darker brown. Um, I use this. I know that a lot of people swear by raw umber. I use this as an, an alternative for raw umber. I don't know why. I just like, like this one better. And the Daniel Smith one has a very nice granulation to it. And I do like a granulation. All right. Um, moving over to the uh, top right uh, side, I've got two greens. As I said, this is my studio palette, bear with me. These are just my convenience, my go-to um, greens. Um, and this one is, uh, as I mentioned also in the, in the um, previous video, the talk of the town, undersea green, Daniel Smith. Everybody loves this one. Everybody that um, even remotely paints a tree, wants to use undersea green. I don't blame them. I am exactly the same, uh, undersea green. Um, what can I say about this one? Shadows and leaves and trees in, in forests. Um, look at this amazing granulation once again. Um, undersea green also, I believe, because I didn't write any pigment information, um, so I do believe this is also a mineral-based paint. So, undersea green. Let me put a bit more. Yes, okay, that's what I wanted to see. The darker value, which just disperses so nicely. And wait until that's dried up. Undersea green, um, yeah. Seaweed, right? It, the name does it, it says it itself. It's um, if you're in a marshland and you you take a dive into um, uh, like yeah the the lake and there's there's just a growth of seaweed and mud and stuff like that. This is 
what you would get. Um, any Harry Potter fans might say gillyweed color. <laughs> um, this is undersea green for me. Very natural looking one, straight out of the tube. No mixing needed to get a very nice color for your trees. Greenish Umber Sennelier. To be honest, I had never ever heard of this color um, until I browsed the Sennelier site a bit and I was immediately sold. This is an amazing um, green, a great green. Uh, look at that. I, I absolutely love this. I would, uh, I would like to share with you what I use this for, but to be honest, I, I use this for, uh, in the mix of, for almost everything. I use this, and now I'm messing up with my, um, with my uh, undersea green here. Let's see if I can just. This is a very nice, um, even for just like uh, clothes and, and people's jackets or, or whatever. This is a very nice green. Um, PBK7, PB60, PY83. A real convenience mixture. I would not know where to begin how to get this myself. So I just use this one on my palette. I might clean this mess up a bit later when it's dry. And then the two final ones, uh, Jane's Grey, Payne's Grey. Again, two classics. Jane's Grey, you probably say, hey, why would you put that on your palette? Just take an ultramarine and a burnt sienna and you have the perfect neutral tint, the perfect Jane's Grey, which is exactly what these pigments are. PB29, French ultramarine, PBR7, uh, burnt sienna. Again, I don't need to mix them when they're on my palette. So let's just use them on here. Um, it's the first time I've filled up this palette. Nobody knows if in six months I would probably, I would perhaps throw out some colors. Some colors that um, I would say, hey, I can easily mix these. For example, a Jane Grey and just replace it with a Stunning color that is um, not that easy to mix. For example, uh, turquoise. Um, I haven't had any use for turquoise as of yet. I've never used turquoise, but never say never. And perhaps turquoise might enter the palette at a given point in time. But today not. Today, Jane's Grey it is. And then another one, um, Payne's Grey. Another, uh, yeah classic, I would say, right? Um, Daniel Smith, PBK6, PB60, uh, Payne's Grey, uh, perfect alternative for black. Uh, there's no black in this palette. Um, so, a bluish grey, Payne's Grey, which is ideal for shadows in, in everything, the, the ideal shadow color. Uh, which is a bit, which has a bit more life to it than a standard neutral grey. Let's see if we can get this one a bit darker. All right. So there we go. That's it. This is my color palette, my studio palette. Now, let's see if we can clear this up a bit. All right. That looks better. Just easily liftable as well. There we go. Greenish Umber by Sennelier. Um, going back to this undersea green, look at that dispersion of these minerals. They all have a bit the same, this um, diopside, this appetite, Undersea green, uh, you can tell that these are really um, uh, ground minerals. They leave um, a sort of a, uh, I have no idea how to say this, um, a sort of a condiment on the paper, a sort of a residue on the paper, um, which I absolutely love. So there you have it. This is my color wheel, my big studio palette. 
um, let me know what you think. Um, and uh, if you like this video, if this is something um, up your alley, then uh, feel free to like, even subscribe. It always helps out the channel. Um, and with that said, I'll leave you guys to it. So thanks a lot and see you in the next one.